Hey, it's Jamie from TheDailyInfusion.com where you can learn how to reclaim health, create wellness, and transform your life. I'm so excited to be introducing my guest today, Lottie Ryan, the creator of Who's That Lady, which is also LottieRyan.com. She is someone that I met in Marie Forleo's B-School, an online business school where you can learn how to start your own business and really reach your message to the world, which is how the two of us came to be uh, speaking today. We both experienced chronic illness and chronic pain. Lottie has quite a story of inspiration that I admire her so deeply. She spent 17 years with ulcerative colitis in, the, in, in a J poucher and has fibromyalgia, migraines, many other issues that she deals with every day with a smile despite it all and has managed to create this beautiful platform for women to come together where she can support women who, who want to learn how to create this life despite the challenges that we have coming our way. And I'm just so honored and grateful to welcome her. Thank you, Lottie, for being here. What a lovely introduction. <laughs> so would you just share with us a little bit more about your wellness journey, specifically like how, what happened for you when, when things shifted and changed in your life that you got a big wake-up call? Gosh, so, so I've been sick my entire adult life. Um, and I started to become symptomatic when I was around about the age of 19. And although I wasn't diagnosed until 23, I certainly was living with um, some severe problems um, up until that point. So I guess just, you know, growing up for me, illness has been part of that. So whether, whether that's been instrumental in how I've grown up or whether it's just, you know, I would have grown up this way anyway, it's really difficult to tell. Um, but in terms of things really shifting for me, uh, that happened about six years ago when I had my j pouch surgery. So up until that point, I'd lived with ulcerative colitis, which is an inflammatory bowel disease, and had been really, really sick um, for 10 years. Um, very difficult trying all of the medications known to man to manage that condition, and none of them worked. And eventually, I took the decision to have a J pouch, which is to have my uh, large intestine, my colon, and my rectum removed, and a pouch formed out of the bottom of my small intestine. You can Google it. It's, it's quite complicated, but it's really cool. It's really amazing. And it gave me a lot of my life back. Yeah. And prior to that, I'd spent an awful lot of time in the bathroom. Still a significant part of my life, but not mm. as significant. And by then, too, I was um, 32. I had two children. My youngest was two and a half at the time. And, and I guess the, the, you know, the culmination of everything, the, the shift in my health from severe, severely bad, very, very bad, not being able to manage any kind of life, not being able to take care of my children, um, not, certainly not being able to work, hadn't been able to work for years. Um, really struggling to have any kind of control over my life, that did shift with my J-pouch surgery. So although I certainly did not get completely well, I, I definitely saw a huge improvement that allowed me to start taking back some of my life again. Um, and I guess that's when things, having children too, and, and having finished having children, I knew I wasn't gonna have any more. And uh, you know, those, um, who are listening, who have had children, they'll know that there's a shifting point in your life where your kids, you, you've done that baby thing and, and it's time to move on. And uh, I guess that all came about at the same time and, and really uh, that, that, was, that was the point when I decided that I wanted my life back and, and I wanted to achieve great things in my life and I wasn't going to be that sick girl anymore, mm. you know? And... I still am sick, so unfortunately that's not completely gone away and and I think it's highly likely that it never will, that it's always going to be a part of my life. I mean that, you know, it's called chronic illness for a reason. It, it's, it, you know, it's, it's for life and the things I have now are incurable, but they're certainly manageable and I take steps every day to not only manage my pain, but just to manage my life and help it move forward so that I have some good stuff happening as well, as well as the bad stuff. 
Yeah. Of course. I mean, something I love that you have all over your website is to remind us to stand in our power that despite whatever anybody may tell you is incurable or is going to ruin your life and your life's not going to be the same, it's we still have our power and our choices and we can choose how to view and perceive the events that we go through. So I just love what you've done with, your, with the perspective that you have that you share with us and recently you've wrote about it in the Huffington Post and it really took off. Can you share with us a little bit of those lessons that you shared in the Huffington Post that you've learned from this experience? Yeah. Of course. I mean, so the, th the thing I have taken from all of this is that you always have to look for the joy. You always have to look for the good stuff. And I know that sounds kooky sometimes. And I know that it's hard. It's, you know, when you're in, in it, when you're in pain and you're managing this health condition that sees you at the doctors and in the hospital and in emergency rooms all the time, it's really difficult to look for the good. But it is there. And the more time we can focus on it and we can practice bringing our focus to it, we, the better off we are. And so the Huff Post piece, that's been a really exciting um, event in my life, to say yes. the least. Yes. Talk about um, six things that um, we get from living with chronic illness that are, that are great. Mm -hmm. And um, I won't go through all of them because, um, you know, guys can go and read it and, uh, and, see, and see what that is all about. But I think for me, a couple of the really important things that I would love to share with people are love. I, I think that we forget to acknowledge the love that we have in our lives and the, the, the great stuff. You know, we, there's a tendency when we're ill to focus on all the bad things that people say and all the bad things that people do to us yeah. because we're already suffering and, and therefore it becomes even more hurtful though, though, those things that people say to us that, that aren't in line with uh, the way we're feeling at the moment. And I started to really focus on acknowledging the love in my life, you know, those things that my husband does for me, you know, that, those times when he gets up in the middle of the night to get my medication because I'm in too much pain, you know, those times when he wakes up and realizes that I've had a really bad night and he takes the kids to school for me. And in the scheme of things, they're, they're little things, you know, and whether you have a husband or a partner or, or a good friend that does this stuff for you, if we just focus on those really good things that people do for us, we will notice that there's so much love in our lives that can help us, can help move us forward and into a brighter space. And uh, I think the same goes for everything. If we can just notice the love and focus on that, don't focus on the bad stuff, that, you know, People will always project bad stuff onto us, particularly when we have a chronic illness because we are shining a, a, a light on the darkness that can happen in people's lives. That We are showing them that actually life isn't smooth running and we're not all healthy. And, and, and yeah, bad stuff does happen to people and, and we do, do get sick and we do end up in hospital and we do have major surgeries. And, that's really hard for people to deal with that, that don't deal with it, that aren't like us. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's too much for them. And as a result of that, they can be very defensive and they can say cutting things or, the, or they can be dismissive and ignore us. And, but if we just stand in who we are and be in the love that we have and focus on that, forget the bad stuff, focus on the good stuff, we will feel so much better. And in my life, every day, if I can just, just for a time, pull myself out of the focus of the bad stuff into the good stuff, I feel 10 times better. Oh, I hear that. Amen. <laughs> it's, it's really finding that gratitude for that it isn't all bad and that it's uncomfortable, yes, and it's uncomfortable for people to witness pain of any kind. We don't like it even when people cry. If you notice that we have a tendency to tell people, don't cry, don't cry, and it really bothers me because it's a perfectly natural response to what we're going through. Yes. And everyone is capable of feeling this way. Even if it's just a cold for a week, you know what it's like to not be your top physical self at some point or another. And if you can imagine having to go through that chronically for so long, that's even more painful for people to really get and understand. It's like, who it wants can't. to believe that? Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, I don't want to believe it. <laughs> what? Exactly. Right? <laughs> but it's so true. Don't blame them. But, but as soon as we... Uh, as soon as we stop blaming them, you know, I, I see a lot of people blaming that attitude. Why are they like that? Why do they speak to me like that? Why do they respond to me like that? And actually in my life, I found that if I can just bring some love and compassion to them as well, then those reactions, they change. People change. And that was the, ne the other thing I wanted to, to, to mention that was in my article. It's about compassion aren't we just blessed with so much compassion mm, it's and true. i i feel like that's such a privilege in my life that i can now look at people and i don't judge yeah. i mean i say that we all have judgments judgments are yeah. really important they protect us they look after us but we have to acknowledge that some of our judgments are wrong and they're misplaced and they do not help yeah. and if we can just bring some love and some true compassion, the world moves so much more smoothly and it's so much more comfortable for us to be in with each other. Yes, you know, when I, when I see, I, I use this example quite a lot because um, I think it's something people can relate to. You see a man standing on a tube or a train, you know, when, when they're really busy, the commuter line on the L or whatever, and you you're standing there and, and you know you're a woman and you're struggling and this man's um he sits down in the seat that becomes available and you're like you know that you're not looking great you certainly don't feel great <laughs> so you assume you're not looking great um worse still you could be pregnant you know i've been in a situation where i've been pregnant and people have done this yeah. and you think you know initially kind of society tells us to think that's wrong he's a man he should give me his seat he should he should not have done that but now I look and I think to myself, he could have rheumatoid arthritis and standing there is killing him. Mm. And he's done a, an entire day at work. He has got to get home. This commute is just as difficult for him as it is for me. And I welcome him to have that chair. Mm. Take that seat and be comfortable with it. And what that does is that makes me feel great. You know, yeah, I'm still in pain. I'm still standing there. I'm still struggling to hold on to the train and I'm still wishing that the journey would end. But I feel so much better than if I stood there for the next 10 minutes, angry, thinking, that guy, why did he do that? How, can he not see that I'm so sick? And, and why, should, why should he have that seat and not me? And, you know, you spiral into this angry, unloving space that's so unhelpful. It doesn't help us feel better. It makes us feel worse. It's true. And if people, uh, I feel like chronic illness has given me that. It's given me the compassion to see people with love. And we all feel better for it. I feel better for it. They feel better for it because I'm not scowling at them sat in their chair. And, you know, the, the, there's no none of this barrier of judgment between us. So. It's true. Oh, I love that. Are you familiar with Byron Katie at all? No, I'm not. No. Because like what you're talking about is she has a process called the work, which is that it's about our stressful thoughts. And when we're judging people and when we have assumptions that we make, like let's say the situation with this gentleman who sits down and you are thinking to yourself, what a jerk. He's sitting there and I'm struggling here. And But is that true? That's the question that she has you ask yourself. Is that true? Okay. And then you answer, well, yeah, I think he's a jerk. And then you ask again, is that really true? Can you absolutely know that that is true? And it's like, well, no, actually, I, I don't. Uh, so it kind of it gives you that second to turn around the thought and like, well, how can I own this experience right now? Well, I could always speak up. I could always say, hey, is it possible that I can sit down in that seat? I'm really tired and actually give myself the voice instead of making an assumption and attacking a stranger in my head. It's, it's a very That's helpful process. process. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, so I'm an introvert. Mm -hmm. So that's quite a difficult thing for me to do. It's something I'm definitely working on. But I, you know, and maybe that's why I made the choice that I've made to, to just think, mm -hmm. wonder, wonder, you know, what could have brought that situation for him and, and, and wonder with compassion and love. But yeah, gosh, I totally agree. Like, you know, ask. Right. People are very responsive to, to, to communication and uh, yeah, definitely. She, 
I want to read more about her. It yeah, like- the book, it's, it's on my website, actually. Uh, Loving What Is is the name of book, the book that talks about the work, but you can look it up online, just the work, Byron Katie, uh, B-Y-R-O-N, and Katie, K-A-T-I-E. So she's amazing, and she really, actually, in my healing process, turned a lot of stuff around for me when I was having thoughts about my symptoms, really. Because those are things that like we can get caught in a loop in our head when we're feeling that physical pain. Like, why is this happening? And just all the things that come through our mind. And this process really helped me stop those thoughts in its track before I could get off in that downward spiral. Mm -hmm. So definitely, definitely recommend that for many people. But for sure, just like learning how to have that compassion with others and yourself to give yourself that voice. I love it. I love that you do that so beautifully. Um, and I have a little visitor coming into the screen right now. <laughs> uh, so what I wanted to ask is, is how can you best be of service? How can people find you? What would you like to do to, if, if you're trying to, to call out to people who might need your services right now? My aim is to help women create the life they really want. You know, so often when we're diagnosed with chronic illness, we go through those first few months, often years, and we're just living with this new diagnosis and coming to terms with what that means for us and uh, inevitably a process of, of grieving for what could have been, should have been, would have been. And I think what happens is for many of us, we end up being dragged down by that and struggling to come out of it. And a chronic illness is for life. And there is no denying that that is depressing. And at times we we need to sink into that and acknowledge that. You know, I, I sit here and I'm all jolly and happy. I have times when I cry myself to sleep and when I just think, why me? And... I wonder why things can't be different. Of course I do. I'm human. I don't want to be sick. Nobody wakes up wanting to be in pain every day. But eventually, I believe we have to come to a point of acceptance and acknowledge that this is our lives, that that this is quite possibly the way it's going to be for the rest of our lives. And we then have an option to work with what we have or to just curl up and sink in a corner or under the duvet and hide from life for the rest of it, mm. which only has one ending. And, and really and truly that's depression and misery and the not so nice stuff, right? That yeah. the really horrible stuff. And I have worked so hard to bring myself out of that and to engage with my life and to make my life great. And I can honestly tell you that no, the illness is not great. I don't wanna have migraines. I don't wanna have achy legs and arms. I don't wanna be in the bathroom eight times a day. But my life is great. Aside from that, I have a lot of love. I experience some amazing things. And as, as this has been happening for me during my period of development, which I say is probably over the last six years, I've realized that so much is possible if only we believe in ourselves and if only we believe that it's possible and we take small steps, really small, low energy steps to create the momentum we need to get things to happen. And I want to help other people do that because it's been so magical. It's, it's, it's just given me back so much of my life that I didn't imagine I could have. You know, I went through a period of time when I just didn't, I, 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 you know, like I said, I was ill from the age of 19. I, I started to envision pretty yucky bad stuff for my life. Mm. One day I just thought, I, I can't do that. It's not fair on me. It's not fair on my husband. It's not fair on my children. It's not fair from, for anybody who is part of my life. They don't want that for me and they don't want to be in that or with me. And the only person who can change it is me. Yeah. But... Support really helps. Knowing you're not alone, knowing you have people out there you can go to with your problems, you know, for help with things that you you want to do. We all need that. You know, we are not, we're not living on an island by ourselves. There is lots of support out there. And 
I want to be part of that for people. I want them to know that they're not alone, that they're not the only woman to go through this, and that they can raise themselves out of it. I've been through some pretty dire, dire situations. You know, I, I have nearly lost my life on more than one occasion. And I know, I, I really, really know what it's like to go through this stuff. I, I know what it's like to um, imagine that your life is not going to be going on for much longer. I know what it's like to wonder how on earth you can possibly get yourself back up. Mm-hmm. And I mean that literally. You know, there's been, there's been many times when I have been in bed and I have wondered how, how am I ever going to get out of here? How am I going to make this body move, just simply move? And so I know, and I also know that you can, you can come out of that. You just need to believe, you just need to focus, and you just need to take really tiny steps. And even when we are at our worst, we are so capable of tiny steps. Mm -hmm. And I always remember um, having my surgery. So every time I've had my surgery, I I don't know if you have major surgeries, but Mm -hmm. you can have the biggest surgeries. And they say that bowel surgeries are the biggest surgeries and the hardest surgeries to recover from. And yeah, I I can vouch. (laughs) I can vouch for that being true. Mm -hmm. But what they do is within 24 hours, sometimes within hours, they have you up and out of bed and walking down the corridor. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how bad it is. And that's because you need to take small steps. And I always think to myself, if they can make me do that hours after they've cut me open and removed parts of my body, I have no excuses by the time I'm at home. Right. You know, I can get out of that bed and I can walk down that hallway. It may be two steps. It may be one step. But I can do it. And I'll take that one step. And the next day I'll take two. Maybe for five days I'll only be taking two steps, but eventually I'll take three. And I just focus on moving one step at a time. And as I've done that, I've come out of it and life has blossomed and I want to make that happen for people. Mm. And that's what I do. You already are doing it. And I just love that. And the micro movements, man, they really do revolutionize our lives. And on top of that, but to celebrate them, like I try to do a little mini celebration. Remember the days where I couldn't go from the bed to the bathroom or the bed to the kitchen to get an apple when I was alone and really hungry. I would just not eat because I couldn't even get up to do that. But when I could, it was like, oh my God, I got an apple. (laughs) It was just like, hooray. And I think the more we celebrate those things, the more we're sending that message out to the universe and that that energy out that like, no, I can do this. And you're fueled. You're given more energy in return. You're gifted with that once we open to it and celebrate it and acknowledge it. That like, this is a celebration that I wiggled my toes. (laughs) It's a celebration that I lifted my head up. Exactly. Isn't it also great that when you wiggle your toes, you've got other people to celebrate that with you? Mm-hmm. Because there's something, there's something about, I, I, I've observed in my um, parenting with my children, I celebrate their moments. I mean, there's some arguments to say that we celebrate them too much yeah, nowadays. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, rah, you put your dish in the dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of a bit full on. But... There's something to be said for celebrating those small achievements. I, I see my kids, I watch them. When, when they get celebrated, they're encouraged to do more. So then they take bigger steps and then they take bigger steps. And because they're secure in the knowledge that someone's there supporting them, that someone's there, someone is there helping them and that they're going to be there to celebrate with them. Mm-hmm. So ultimately, it's a worthwhile achievement because it's going to be validated. Mm-hmm. And I think as adults, we lose an awful lot of that. Particularly in this global world, we this very small global world that we now live in, where we don't live with our extended families. I mean, I don't. I live on the other side of the world to my extended family, and and we lose those pats on the back, those right, yay you, and we even come into ourselves and, and decide that we can't even celebrate those things ourselves because we just look ridiculous. And why is that important? And you know, gosh, gosh, heaven forbid we should stand outside of the crowd and do something exceptional because 
how could they possibly approve of that? And that's sad. Mm -hmm. That's really, really sad for all of us. And so with Who's That Lady, um, I have a Facebook group which I invite women to join. And there, it's new. It's new, so we're getting used to it. But what I'm trying to teach my girls is that we celebrate. We're going to celebrate those little toe wiggles. You know, when you're in bed, and we go, we're going to celebrate that one step. We're also going to celebrate those momentous occasions when you get on an airplane. Oh, my gosh, I remember my first airplane trip. Oh. After sick and not being able to travel, it was like, whoa. Yeah. And, you know, these huge things. And it's all great. There's no judgment. I'm not going to judge you. If I've just got on a plane tomorrow and you're just wiggling your toes, I'm going to celebrate that just as much because I've been there and I know how amazing that wiggle your toe moment is. Mm -hmm. And I want to uh, inspire people to know that they can get here. And I also want to celebrate when they're in those little movements at the beginning. Right. And the thing is with chronic illness is in my experience, it's cyclical. So yes, I might be flying on a plane because I literally am on Friday. Mm -hmm. I'm flying on a plane on Friday. But last year, I couldn't go anywhere for an entire year. You know, I, I spent my entire year in hospital and, mm -hmm. and having operations and, and all that kind of stuff. And that will no doubt happen to me again. And so I just want to encourage people to celebrate to inspire, to be inspired, and to make these lives happen because we deserve it. Yes, we're sick, but we deserve to have a great life. Mm -hmm. We don't deserve to be sat in bed miserable and hungry for love and hungry for attention and hungry for support. So if that's just if that's all I can give people, that's what I'm here for. Mm. You're not alone, and I'm here to support you. Mm. And that's it for me. Thank you so very much for doing such a beautiful job and inspiring me every day in the process. So I'm so happy to introduce you to our viewers. And uh, just once again, where can they find you exactly? So they can find me at LottieRyan.com. Yes. If they go there, they will find everything else. I really hope to see them over there if, it, if, if I and what I do and you know what my website shows resonates because it's all great stuff, and I'd love to have them on board. And Thank I you, Jamie. And I vouch also for the Facebook group. I am in there, and I think it's a beautiful thing that's happening when women come together and we can share in the reality of our lives, the beauty of it, the horror of it, and just like be there for everything without judgment unconditionally. There's magic that happens. And, and people who don't necessarily have family that's with them, or they might be single, or they might be alone. Like, I was single for so long and sick, and my God, I wish I had done so much more with that time to connect with people because it's it's just the best medicine sometimes. So. Oh, it so is. And that's the Who's That Lady group. So it's yes. all one word, Who's That Lady group on Facebook. But they can they can find access to that through my website. Right. But yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful group of women. And they inspire me every day, every day. Thank you, Lottie. It's such a pleasure. And I'm going to have you back real soon. <laughs> Thank you. I hope so. <laughs> oh, great, bye.